welcome to Miracle Beach on Vancouver Island near Courtney, BC. We're going to show you our 2021 Pleasure Way Tofino. We just picked it up yesterday and I will share the dealer's walkthrough, which is very detailed. Before we go into it, I want to tell you about two or three key differences that are between the 2021 and the older models. So the first one is that Pleasure Way switched the location of the control panel, which is now bigger. Oops, it should be on, which is now bigger and up here. And the Xantrex inverter. The inverter controls the induction cooktop as well as the 110 volt plug-in. I just wanted to show you the older one, the older models, the control panel was down here and the Xantrex inverter was up there. So this is much bigger and easier. And the dealer went through this all with me, so that's coming up in a few minutes. But just wanted to show you, give you an idea of the spaciousness <laughs> of the loft. And this is where I slept last night. And this is my bed. It's nice, isn't it? And I'm gonna show you also my windows. This is the bedroom window right there, and there's my feet. And then we're gonna pan over to the front. Oh, there's my back door, it's wide open. It swings all the way so it's flush against the van. This is the other thing that's new. This thing is an elastic and it helps pull in the canvas when you pop the pop top down. This is just the front window. And that's plastic, so you can see right through. It's not a screen, which on either side are screens. And there's the side window, and then it goes all the way to the back, and there's my feet. Now I'll take you straight to the dealership, and he'll take you through the whole pleasure way from tip to toe, and show you how everything works. And they've also upgraded the control panel, and you've got the upgraded solar panels on the roof. So they've gone to the larger panel hump to give you more power, essentially, and it's a little more sturdy, a little more robust. This is the new control panel. In your manual, it doesn't cover this yet. So oh. Pleasure Way is going to be releasing a new manual with all this, and we're waiting from Grant, our rep, to give us the insight on how this operates. Yeah. But I've already, I've been playing around with it, so I know how it operates, which is pretty easy. You've got a touchscreen panel, so on the top left is your heat, and that's your Truma Vario heat. So that's gonna control your thermostat. Look at that. And then the button underneath it where it says heat. So just underneath the actual dial. Oh, so yeah. when that's on, so blue means on. So if you push that button, so now the Truma Vario heat is on. Ooh. It runs off propane for the heat and 12 volt battery for the, um, the blower fan. On right so. now it's 73 degrees in here. So you have to dial it all the way up past that in order for that to kick on. Ooh, I heard something. Oh. And so now you've got air coming through. And there's two of those? Two of those there. Yeah, so air coming through those. Uh, your intake is down here, so it draws air in from there. And then it blows it out from those two there. So your whole heat system is underneath that cabinet there. Um, just be aware that when this is running, nothing blocking those vents, nothing blocking that intake vent either. Right. You know, when you when you block those up, now all of a sudden your furnace is running harder than it should. Below that thermostat is your light control panel. So you've got um, four buttons there, living, reading, loft, and porch. So anything with an up and down arrow is dimmable. Porch light being outside is not dimmable, so you can shut that one off if you want. So, and gray is off, blue is on. Uh, loft is the one right here in the center of the roof and you can dim that one. A lot of people utilize this as the main light in here um, instead of the kitchen lights if you only need one light. And then it's gonna be the same with the rest of them as well. Now you can control your power output. So, you know, you can have a little bit of light on, you can have only a few lights on, you can dim the ones that are on yeah. um, to, to minimize your power usage and maximize the duration of your stay. On the top right there, so DC power, this is your battery gauge as well as your amps in and amps out. What you see there is almost like a, like a speed gauge, like an odometer or speedometer. Um, right now we're plus zero amps. So between the solar panel and what we have on, we're neutral right now. Whatever we're using is being replenished by the solar panel. When you'll see a difference here is say you've got your inverter turned on and you've got your induction cooktop running. 
Um, now you're going to see uh, a negative number, so you're going to have draw. You've got an inverter control here, just down there. You've got your Xantrex button, so you push the power button on that one. That is going to key on. Give it a minute, just let it do its thing and warm up. Okay, so the beeping sound is power. So now we've got a light on our on our inverting cook, like our, our induction cooktop. So we can turn this on. So this has to be turned on before you're going to get any power to your receptacles? Any power to your 110s, so yeah. Like this plug is live now, so it shows that we've got power to it. Turn the inverter off, everything goes dead. Now it shows positive one amp, so we, whatever the inverter used up right now, now we're, we're putting more power back into the battery right now, which is good. That'll go up as high as what the solar power That'll we're go getting. as high as whatever it needs to charge up. So if your batteries are really low, and you start the vehicle or you plug in that could go as high as 40 amps 50 amps almost you know it can go really high whatever needs to go to the batteries to charge them up it can go up to right if just the solars were working and i yep. wanted to know how much i'm getting out of the solars that would tell me that would tell as you. long as i'm not running the yep. vehicle yep. and, and it would I it would vary depending on what your battery needs versus what's coming in so your battery's still at 99 percent so it's only needing to pull in about two amps right now you know, your charge volts 13.6 is what it wants to be at for full batteries um, right now the panel's taking in 18.1 volts and it's going to vary depending on the sunlight so the volts in and the charge amps are going to vary kind of between the two of them there mm -hmm. so as we get cloud cover or clouds move over your panel volts is going to go down and your charge amps are going to go down slightly because these are go power panels um, they will still charge on a cloudy day or an overcast day you're still going to get some kind of charge mm. you can turn your solar charge controller off as well which i don't know why you'd want to but you can the option is there you can go into a settings as well and you can see kind of what's going on uh, with that there so yeah the gears the settings now this is where you don't really want to mess with too much stuff um, but it's going to tell you a lot more than you're ever really going to need to know so your charging percent um, pretty much everything what's going on there oh yeah so you can keep track of how much you're using yep. so you have an idea of if you can last five days out in the boonies yep, exactly it's going to give you a history of what's going on yeah um you're not going to want to mess with the battery type or the battery bank size no. Um, or the linkage mode you want to leave all that um, and then the clear history button obviously if if you wanted to clear that off and start fresh for your history it's just like clearing the the browser history in a right. computer and then you're going to start fresh what's going on this week with where i'm going so the historic days total here being 15 15 since this was um, all put together all put together and everything so that probably would be a good idea to reset to now so we could measure what See we're what doing you're using for the next week or two that's to shut off the display panel it's not going to kill it completely it's just going to shut off the display panel but it's in a standby mode step and you can push that button if you want and i'll run you through that as well so for here you can adjust your temperature units oh yeah um, fahrenheit or celsius uh, the slide scale is the backlight so it's going to be darker or lighter um, screen settings you can click on that one it's going to tell you how many minutes after nobody touches it will the screen shut off cool. and your color scheme could be light or dark and you can change that right now if you want and it's just going to change to oh, a brighter like display or a darker display your diagnostics button uh, this is going to tell you what's going on so uh, blue is good so that's essentially what to do so it tells you what's going on blue means you've got power to stuff and the status is good um, if you go to your g12 so this is your 12 volt um, breaker panel, essentially telling you where power is going. This has resettable 12 volt breakers in it. So if anything pops, it will reset itself. Anything with blue means that we've got power going to that right now. So we don't have any power going to our water pump. Um, our fridge is running off of 12 volt. Lights are on, um, furnace is off, porch light is off. If you go to the, the DCM3 button there. So this is your battery health and diagnostics. So what is your battery health at? Um, you're gonna see battery status is 13.4 um, DC current right now is you're putting 0.1 amp into the battery essentially what we're using for power for lights is being replenished by the solar um, the one thing you are gonna want to see with this is your battery health so that is something you're gonna monitor over time um, being that you've got dual 100 amp hour lithium-ion batteries um, they are gonna last a lot longer than a conventional lead acid battery so your battery health should stay 100% for a lot longer. Um, things that could damage your battery health over time is cold weather charging. So if it does get really cold outside um, and you're charging the, the batteries up, or if you're constantly discharging your batteries to zero and then recharging them back up again, um, even though they're the lithium ion batteries and they should go back up to 100% over you know, five, 10, 15 years, you are gonna 
lose a bit of battery percentage there. Mm -hmm. So, and this will tell you what's going on. Last one is your faults. So I've got lots of faults, but this one will tell you what its mm -hmm. faults are. Faults tells you if anything's wrong. Oh. So this is gonna tell you if a breaker has popped or if a fuse has popped or if something's not running for some reason, um, which is really nice because then it can give you its self-diagnostic essentially. And you can see what's happening and then you can correct that issue. So propane is full, fresh is empty, gray is empty. Um, water pump switch is just a touch button, like a push button switch again. So blue is on. Um, you can kick that on. There's probably a little bit of water left in the lines. So essentially you've got, and then you can control. Now with the pump, um, the cycling is because it's not building up pressure. Um, once it builds up pressure, the pump will stop. But it is always going to cycle or it'll always cycle. It's just what it is and it's how it operates. Oh, okay. And it's because the pump is so close to the line itself um, that it can't build up pressure in the line. So like in a larger RV, I'll get a cloth to wipe all that down. In a larger RV, you might have 20 feet of line. Right. And that will be pressurized. So when you open your tap, um, you're not gonna have your pump kick on right away. You're gonna bleed that pressure a bit and then the pump will kick on. By the time it reaches the tap, the surging is gone. Okay. And here, the pump is literally right underneath us so you're you're always going to get that um so you just open your tap slowly just so it doesn't splash off. underneath this so gfi plug-in because it's a wet location this again when your inverter's on or you're plugged in that becomes live um, if this plug doesn't work or your outside plug doesn't work it's just because it's been tripped so you just have to reset it push the reset once the green light comes back on you're good mm. um, if your induction cooktop pops its fuse so it's just here trip and reset to reset your induction cooktop there. Now, under this cabinet, we've got a couple of things. So you've got your water pump, which you can see is right there. So this is where it's directly underneath us, which is why we're getting, essentially, the, the surge of the pump gives us a surge of water. Okay, is um, there a filter on that at all? Uh, it is, so you've got a particulate filter, um, which is just this guy. Well, that right. tiny thing. So that's that's for particles from your freshwater holding tank. There is no actual, um, like, large, filtration system with the unit. Yeah. Um, some people will get an inline water filter just yeah. to go off of the tap and the campsites or whatnot. Uh, and then you just carry a couple of those. They're good for, depending on the volume of water, could be three months, could be six. So you'll see a couple things in here. Um, P-traps are all threaded on. So if you lose anything important down the sink, you can get to it still. You do have a breather right here. So essentially because um, you may build up a bit of a vacuum in there, that breather is going to just suck air into it to allow the water to flow down instead of gurgling through the sink. Yeah. And then down here, you've got uh, a couple of fuses down there as well. So just be aware, whatever you're loading in, just try not to catch any of that stuff there. Fridge, so with the fridge, your controls are on the left side of the inside wall, and it's gonna have a couple different things. You're gonna have a cold gauge on it, you're gonna have a power button. So power button's marked there and the, the thermostat's marked there. So right now it's set to the coldest temperature. Yeah. And it's on right now. Okay. And you can remove the freezer part, right? So you'd just be all one? Uh, this guy, yeah, you can take it out. I think you do have to remove the door to take the freezer out. Then it stays on. It runs on 12 volt when you're traveling. When you plug in, it converts over to 110. Uh, table, like I said, located behind the driver's seat. So it's just in its own little cradle there, locked into place. Basic stuff, um, just like any vehicle, you know. Washer fluid goes in here. Rad fluid, just keep it on the level, max versus minimum, in case you need to uh, add any of the radiator fluid or antifreeze. Oil dipstick and oil fill, it's just located down here. So easy to get to either of those. Uh, other than that, you know, there's not too much that you're gonna wanna have to do in here. Um, if you're feeling generous and you want to give somebody a jump start or a boost, uh, for that part, you've got a grounding pin and then you've got a positive lead there. So you're going to hook the uh, jumper cables, negative on there, positive on that lead, and then hook it onto their vehicle. And then you start up, they try to start up, and hopefully you get them back on the road. Right, but the battery, the chassis battery, is where? Uh, well, you've got coach batteries and chassis batteries. Your chassis, chassis battery, battery is under your seat. That's what I thought. So they, they just run this out so you can use it. You can it use it to, to jumpstart people. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. uh, a couple of things you just want to keep an eye out. Make sure you never put windshield washer fluid in here. Make sure you never put antifreeze in here. 
uh, and never really play with this. Uh, that's brake for your fluid. brake fluids. You've got a fuse relay under here. You've also got a fuse relay inside as well. You do have a removable cover plate here, which is just an access panel. Essentially, it allows technicians to get in there, do what they need to do. Uh, and then on the other side, it pops out as well. Fuse panel, this is behind that guy there. So more fuses hide there. So a couple things here. So utility center, this is where your shore power hooks in. So shore power goes from the coach to a 30 amp plug-in. We provide you with a 30 amp to 110 plug in case you want to plug into a standard outlet. Uh, propane on or off. So if you want to turn your propane off for the ferries, just flick it off. Um, once you get to you know where you want to go and you want the propane, just flick it back on. Um, it just engages or disengages a, a solenoid that opens up the valve. Fresh water in location here. So for city pressure hookup, this is where you don't need to use your water pump. You're just running off of the pressure of uh, the water itself. Um, now if you're dry camping, the fresh water fill is up here. This is where you would fill your holding tank and then you're gonna run your pump in order to draw it from that holding tank. Uh, this is the exhaust for your Truma Vario Heat Furnace System. Um, being that it is an exhaust, hot air comes out of there. Um, it does get warm. It says hot on it, which is nice, but it gets warm. So um, no bushes, no foliage, no trees, anything like that, that could potentially, you know, dry up, heat up, warm up, and then catch on fire. Gotcha. Um, it does have a bit of a diffuser here, so the heat doesn't just shoot straight out. It does diffuse out a little bit, which is nice. Fresh water fill location, so just use the hose. So it's sending water in there. Uh, if water comes out of this port or this breather valve here, um, then the tank's totally full. The other uh, option is have somebody standing inside um, watching the gauge fill. But telltale sign, water comes out, you're totally full. You've got your gray tank dump station here. So this is your sewer hookup. Gray valve is your pull. So essentially that is gonna be where you um, pull the gray valve open and then all of a sudden your sink water is gonna come out the sewer set up here. So you set up, you attach your hose first yep. and then you pull yep. that. So sewer line goes on there into the hole in the ground, pull your gray valve, uh, all of the water from the uh, gray tank, which is your sink, runs out into the hole in the ground. Now you can get certain aftermarket caps for those that have a, a threaded smaller end, like a garden hose end on them. So if you wanted to run it just into um, you know, a smaller, you know, say your camp somewhere and then have a big sewer line, you can run it into a smaller one. Um, some people save the gray water and put it into a bucket. If you're having a campfire, you can use it to put out the campfire. Check your tire pressures regularly. Um, you know, with the lugs, they've all been torqued down and checked, but you're still gonna wanna check the, t uh, the lugs on them you know, before a big trip, um, after a big trip. Uh, and especially if you have to do any kind of emergency braking where you really have to lock the tires up, you're just gonna wanna get you know, the lugs checked for, for torque again, um, just because it puts a lot of strain on the, on the rims. Uh, your doors do open all the way. Let's swing all the way around. Nice, so it does really open up the back. Oh, this hinge has been changed. So it used to be where you had to be careful, but now they've changed the hinge on this side oh, okay. to stop you sooner, which is nice. Um, yeah, so you can open your doors all the way. You don't have to worry about too much. Um, they tell you not to use these as grab handles to get in and out of the vehicle, right. which is right there. Uh, a couple things when you're traveling. So just make sure every once in a while you wipe down your rear camera. Keep that nice and clear. Uh, you want to make sure that there's nothing in the way of the door hinges, like the, the actual track itself. So when you're, when you're loading stuff in, just make sure that nothing's sitting down on here. Nothing's over the bumper seals anywhere, so you get that nice positive seal when you're coming in. And make sure when you roll this up, you haven't rolled it up too far past where it's gonna catch on the top locks where you could damage your screen door there. You've got sewer hose, just lives in there. And that's for your gray water tank. You've got an outside shower quick connect there. So it's a cold port shower. Hose is there with the nozzle on it. Um, when you're dry camping, you need to run your water pump in order to get pressure to here. When you're hooked onto city pressure, then it's just a matter of opening up the garden nozzle after that. If you're finding that it's very difficult to get this quick connect into the port, turn off your water. So either disconnect from city pressure uh, or turn off your water pump. Open your tap to bleed the pressure off and then you'll be able to pop this on here quite easy. Okay. So, cause you've got, the, there's a check valve in there that pushes out. So if there's a lot of pressure built up, you may have a hard time pushing this in. Right, okay. So that it's always sense. easy to just bleed the pressure off a little turn bit. Yeah, you just turn this to open it, close it, you know, spray whatever you need to. Use it for, you know, hosing down bikes, hosing down paddle boards, kayaks, canoes, anything like that. Okay. Bodies. Bodies. Well, it's cold water, so you better be ready for a nice cold shower. Uh, this guy here is the front screen 
to go over the front windshield as well as the driver and passenger doors for your privacy. So all the other windows are tinted. They've all got blinds on them. Um, but the front ones, obviously no blinds, no tinting, so you have to be able to put these up uh, for privacy at nighttime. Black on one side, silver on the other side. So you can use the black uh, in the winter time to reflect out so that the silver stays in, the heat stays in. Or summertime, you put the silver out to reflect the heat out and you keep the cold air in. Down here, we've got converter panel. So this is where you've got some 110 breakers. So that's for just the chassis part. Uh, no, this is for the RV, sorry, the RV portion of it. Yeah, yeah this is your, your, your coach. So you've got your receptacles, your induction cooktop, your inverter output, shore power, fridge, and your, your input for your, your inverter. A telescopic ladder is just a telescopic ladder, so follow the instructions on that. It comes with its own manual, believe it or not, for popping up, getting up onto the roof, loading stuff up there if you need to, or using it as a ladder inside to get somebody up into the inside bunk. These guys here, so all the way forward, it's just for travel, and then to make this into your bed, you want to have them spaced out, and then the sofa lays flat, and we're actually going to take this piece, pull it up from inside and make it into the bed. I'll show you guys how that, uh, how that operates. Okay. But you can travel with these down, right? Yep. You can travel with the bed down and in position if you want. Um, one more thing you've got back here is the leg for your inside table. So your table itself and the tripod are in the front behind the driver's seat and the leg just locks in and stores in there. If you're going to be pulling the seat belts through to make this into the bed, Make sure you pull them through and flip them over this piece here so they're hanging down here. Not to fall through. Not the... to fall through or else you've got to get your hand in there and you've got to try to snake them out. So it's just easier just to pull them through and just flip them over this edge here. Just let them hang. Okay. And then it's easy to retrieve them and jam them back up through the, uh, through the seat there. Okay. Yeah, your jack is in there. Yeah, uh, you're jacking you just, your solar control. And that's easy to access then, because you just lifted that up. Yeah, they didn't used to be like that. Um, so, okay. So, oh, they've, what they've done is, yeah, it's because you've got that there now. See, these are the running changes, which are awesome. What's so that? This, this is actually your solar control module there. Oh. So instead of the old Go Power module that was on the wall, oh yeah, this is a 30 amp MPPT, which is a way better control module for solar, but you could also utilize this for storage now. And your battery access is just through the door there. Right, so you get a little bit of space for... Yeah, this is all brand new to me because it didn't used to come out. We used to have to jam our hands in, fish them out, and we'd have to get like somebody with small arms. So, bag of gloves there. So what you've got is a compressor. Um, so 12 volt compressor, you've obviously got a 12 volt plug-in back there. Or so that's a USB plug-in. Here's your 12 volt plug-in. Actually, the cord in this should be long enough to reach from the front to the back. So got, oh, you've got tons of cord. Yes, yeah, so you can reach front to back. Um, so you've got a compressor in here as well as the uh, container full of the tire repair fluid to pump into the tire. So you just hook the hose on. You're going to go over to tire repair first and turn the unit on. It's going to pump the fluid into the tire. Once it's pumped through, turn the unit off, go to inflate unit back on again. Once it hits the PSI that you want, um, then you can shut it off. If you over inflate, you know, don't worry because you do have a bleed off valve. You just hold that down okay. and it'll bleed off the pressure down to whatever you need. Once you get that done, it tells you not to drive. So you want to go no more than 80 kilometers an hour. Mm -hmm. And you, um, you first want to start off kind of slow. So you just want to drive for five, you know, five, 10 minutes nice and slow just to allow that fluid to coat the inside of the tire and then check your pressure again okay. and then make sure your pressure is good and then once you check your pressure again then you can you know continue on less than 80 kilometers an hour uh, to a proper you know repair facility if right. there's one available and is that a one-time use uh you can actually get replacement God, you can get replacement cartridges but so, it would be once it would drain all the fluid out of there. Ideally, you, yeah, you want to use all the fluid just to make sure you get a proper seal inside. Okay. And then you're going to um, go to you know like Mopar is dodged. Okay, so, so you've got um, seven pin plug in, and then you've got a four pin. So four pins for pulling a small utility trailer with no brakes. Seven pin would be if you were going to be pulling a larger trailer with electric brakes in it. Um, in order to pull something with electric brakes, so you'd have to get a brake controller installed into the front. Um, the only other thing we've got back here is our screen. So our screen goes through a couple things. You've got, whoops, 
both down. So. And so that's always there, right? Eh? The screen, yeah, it just rolls up and then locks into the top position. Okay. So you've got a couple things with the screen. You've got Velcro on the bottom, mm -hmm. which Velcros to the bottom here, just to oh, give you a seal. Okay. You've got inside zippers. So where is the zipper? Over here is one. So you've got inside zippers because you've got a privacy shade. And then you've got outside zippers up here so that you can open it up completely from the inside to the outside. Oh, okay. So you've got two two options there. You can have this one just open. And what would you do with that? Uh, it would just roll it back up. So this would roll back oh, up and, it's and got latch a into snap. place. It's got uh, yeah. So you just use these here. integrated snaps here. Gotcha. And you would roll that up into place there. Okay. Uh, and then from the inside, if you wanted to have it for just the screen so you can see out but you can't let bugs in, then it just hangs down. So that's the zipper here. Gotcha. So that just hangs down now. You need to tuck that in kind of underneath, you know, the mattress area there. Oh, okay. And then that's just going to stay down there. That just is in the down position now. Mm. So that allows you to have, you know, your, your ventilation. You can get the, you know, the air through and you don't have to worry about any kind of bugs or insects or anything. Then this just rolls. Oh, yeah, so you want to make sure you zip up the inside one first. Oh, okay. Make sure that zips up. And then essentially you just start from the bottom, you grab the foam and you just start rolling her up. So you see you have a second set of snaps where yeah. you can have it zip down halfway and still get to the storage under the bed. Oh, so I would put it up like this. Yeah, so you can do it halfway like and that, and then you can get underneath your bed for your storage, but still have your bug screens. Because the zip would go down to yeah, here. Exactly, ah, yeah. Right. Just make sure that when you zip it up, like when you roll it up, you roll it up square so you don't have a bunch hanging out. Right. And just make sure that the foam in the end of it doesn't shift either other way. Because in oh. the bottom, you've got a, a foam kind of batten inside there. Yeah. That was smooth. Super easy to drop the bed. They used to have a locking handle, but it was just really, you know, pain in the butt. Um, with your top latches here, so this stops the bed from sliding out. You'll see you do have a notched piece on either side. Pretty much like they've taken a, a hole punch and just punched out a piece there. You're gonna pull down on this and it goes into that latch there. Oh, okay. And that locks it in the down position so that you don't have to try to use, you know, three hands when you only have two. Yeah. Bed comes down. And you do have a notched corner on your bed. So that notched corner goes into the back. Oh, okay. And then the only thing we have to move is that uh, sewer, or not the sewer, the, uh, the spray hose there. It's just gonna have to get pulled up a little bit. And this is where you're probably gonna store that somewhere else. What holds it in is the back doors being closed, pushes it against here and locks it into place. So you'll wanna close the other one first. The, well, other, yeah, the other door is going to be and, your inner door. And this thing, is it likewise this, that can you this can, close with this on? That you can unvelcro and store underneath. That's just where they have it when you're traveling in the up position. Right. I didn't realize you had that open space there. Mm -hmm. oh, right beside the bed down. there. So it's good for, you know, a couple backpacks there. You can have all your clothing packed in there. Then you don't have to worry about, you know, filling up the cabinets and cupboards with clothing. You can have a couple suitcases there. Oh, on this side here, we've got a couple things. Uh, two 110 plugins. So with these guys here, uh, you know, you need to make sure you're either plugged in uh, or your inverter is on in order to provide power to your outlets. You've got a breathing system here. Essentially, it's just a, a vent to allow, you know, a bit of airflow uh, between your battery enclosure and the outside world. Gotcha. Underneath that, you've got your propane uh, fill and then you're also your propane quick connect. Yeah. If you had a propane barbecue or whatnot and you want to plug it into the side door screen on this one, same idea as the rear door screen um, where you've got the zippers come down. Yeah. Uh, it's going to give you, you know, your, your bug screen option. The only difference with this one though is no it has a magnetic door. Right. So you can have the bug screen down, still have the magnetic door. And then they have a piece of Velcro back there that you can push onto there real good to give it a bit of uh, a bit of strength. 
Um, no privacy on this one because you do have the door here that has the blinds, which you can't reach when the door's open, but you've got pull down blinds on the inside there. That light's been on. Yeah, I've got all the lights on right now. So it's uh, it's not like it turns on and off because of the door. This one here is a porch light, so it has its own control there. Down low, um, you're gonna have your carbon monoxide and propane gas alarm, which is the, the black module there. It has a test button on it, so you're gonna wanna test that before each trip. The red key to the left of that is your charge line disconnect. So uh, essentially they tell you that these batteries, the lithium ions, don't want to be charged in sub-zero temperatures. You're getting into storing it in Calgary or in Edmonton or anywhere that gets into minus, you know, minus 10, minus 15, minus 20, um, you know, you're gonna wanna disconnect that. If this is gonna be in like a covered garage or whatnot or stored inside, then it's not a problem. Um, if you're storing it outside in the winter, then yeah, just shut that off. Okay. Um, when you get into really cold temperatures, they advise that you remove the batteries from the unit. So minus 30, minus 40 kind of stuff, you wanna take the batteries out. Um, they have cold room tested charging the batteries. They know that the batteries will charge in colder temperatures in the negatives, but for a safety standpoint, they tell you that you know you definitely want to remove them when you get into the extreme colds. Your batteries are enclosed in a vehicle, so just because it's minus 10 outside doesn't mean it's minus 10 inside the vehicle because right. it has its own insulation and whatnot. Now the other one, which is down here, is your battery disconnect. So your battery disconnect is to take any power coming from the batteries. So if we shut that off right now, all of our lights would turn off. All the power all the power from the batteries is being turned off okay um, this is good for if you're working on any 12 volt stuff so if you need to um, you know change out a light fixture or whatnot in the future um, you can turn the power off and then change that light or again if you're putting it into storage and you're not going to be using it for a week or two and it's going to be covered um, your propane and carbon monoxide detector are always pulling a charge no matter what um, you know, because it's it's hooked straight to your batteries. Yeah. So if you don't want that to slowly drain your batteries, then you can turn that off. Um, same as your display module, even though it's off, it's always in a standby mode. So it draws a small bit of power. Right. So you can turn that off and that off just with your battery disconnected at the bottom there. Okay, so like a TV. Yeah, exactly. Even though it's off, it's not really off. But typically, if you're using this on a fairly routine basis, oh, just, just leave, leave it. Just leave her on. Yeah, yeah, nice and Because your solar charge is up, the engine charge is up, and anytime you plug in, you charge up. So just storage in here, but that is your manufacturer's label. So it gives you your VIN, production date, um, tells you what appliances are in here, gives you some model numbers for that. Um, gives you your gross vehicle weight rating, your cargo capacity on the bottom stickers, everything. So wow. um, try to not remove this sticker ever. Um, it's always a good idea as well to take a photo of this and just, just have a printout. Right. Um, just in case something gets spilt, something gets damaged, or over time that sticker just starts to fade or break yeah. down. Yeah. Um, and then you have a copy of everything. That's it. If you're thinking about getting a pleasure weight or if you have one of your own, feel free to leave a comment below. Take good care of yourself because you are worth taking good care of. Mwah.